Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to give you tips to improve your serve and volley. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, serve and volley. A lot of people think it's dead. It's not dead. I think I heard one time that Rafael Nadal served and volleyed 29 times in the U.S. Open final, the 2019 U.S. Open final against Medvedev. It's pretty amazing, and he won a huge percentage of those points. So serve and volley is not dead. And if you have a great serve and you've got a really good volley, then going to the net is a great idea right off the bat. That being said, please go out and practice your serve and your volley in a way that's going to help you to be able to go to the net right off the serve. One thing, when you practice serve and volley, and you're practicing the serve you're going to use for serve and volley, don't just serve and stay behind the baseline. When you serve and you're just practicing the serve, right? There's no one else here. You're just practicing by yourself. Serve and immediately move into the court. Like let your toss bring you in. Let your momentum go into the court. When you serve in volley, you're not serving, waiting to see if the ball goes in the box and then running forward. That's not how it's going to work. You're going to serve and immediately going forward. You don't care if it goes in the box because you want to be going in in case it does go in. So it's too late to go in if you're doing it once you know the ball goes in the court. So practice serving and immediately moving forward whether the ball goes in the court or not. It's the right thing to do. If you look at Sampras, right, when Pete Sampras would serve against Agassi, let's say, he would serve and immediately running in, run in. He wouldn't wait to see if his serve went in the box. Because if you wait to see that the serve went in the box, it's too late at that point to go forward. So follow your serve up while practicing and just move into no man's land. When it comes to practicing your volley, what I want you to do to practice your volley is I want you to practice hitting volleys from no man's, I'm sorry, from no man's land, even the service line. Practice hitting low volleys. Most players I see who practice volleys, practice volleys from very close to the net. So they don't get that realistic first volley you'll see when you serve in volley. So stand farther back. Even if you're playing doubles, have you and your partner, right, you're warming up before a match, hit some volleys from around the service line. That way you can dig out half volleys and low volleys, volleys at your feet. And you can practice, by the way, keeping them low, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But you want to get really good at volleys from around the service line because that's going to typically be the first volley positioning when you serve in volley. All right, so let's just go over this. You are going to serve in volley. So the idea is simple. The moment you serve, you are going to do what's called one, two, three, split step. Typically, and this changes based on the speed of your serve or maybe if your opponent's a little farther back when you serve in volley, but typically the footwork pattern of a serve and volleyer is one, two, three, split step. Let me explain what that is. You're going to serve and then take one, two, three steps in and then split step. So you're running in and then you split step. When you split step on a serve and volley, remember you split step as the opponent hits the ball. And it doesn't matter where you are on the court. The proper timing of a split step isn't about where you are on the court. It's about when your opponent is hitting the ball. You need to split step. Gives you, it means that you're conceding that you don't know where the ball is going. Right? That's why the pros split step, because they don't know where the ball is going. So they balance themselves and allows them to change direction quickly. It's a braking mechanism. It also allows you to explode out of it. What I tell my students is, if you've got a great serve, and this is that third thing I alluded to. If you've got a great serve and you've got a great volley, the third thing you got to make sure is that you split step. If you don't split step when you're going forward, then don't serve in volley. I love analogies. If you're going to make a brick house, it's great that you got all the bricks, but if you don't have the mortar, the stuff that goes in between the bricks, if you're like, oh, we're all out of mortar, then don't build a brick house, right? It's what you, no one thinks, oh, I've got a brick and mortar house, right? They just say, I've got a brick house. But the mortar is just as important as the bricks. The split step is just as important as the serve and the volley. So you have to make sure that you split step as your opponent hits the ball. So you're going to serve and you're going to take one, two, three steps and then you're going to split step. Let me show you right now 
a college point between USC versus UCLA. And I want you to watch the USC player who's gonna be serving. They're gonna serve and they're gonna come forward. They're gonna take three steps and they're gonna split step as the opponent strikes the ball. I'll see you back here in a second. Now that player, that server, happened to jump on their serve, which you typically see at higher levels. So when he landed off of his serve on his left foot, that's step number one. Then he took a second step, then he took a third step, and then he split stepped. And he split stepped behind the service line. A lot of players think that you're supposed to serve and then run at least to the service line, if not farther into the court, by the time the returner hits the ball. That's nearly impossible. If your serve is that slow, that you've got all that time to run all the way up to here, by the time the returner hits the ball, then don't serve in volley, because you've got like a helium balloon as a serve. And then they're just gonna tee off on it, and it's way too difficult to handle that ball. So when you're hitting a fast serve or a good aggressive serve, you're only gonna get to slightly behind the service line, most likely. Depends on how fast you are, you might be in the middle of no man's land by the time they hit the ball. And that's okay, just make sure you split step. Now in that video as well, we saw the server deal with a low volley. And I'm gonna show you that point again in a second here. But he, the, the returner did a great job of giving the server a low ball. And that's again why it's so important when you practice your volleys that you stand around the service line to practice those low balls. You don't wanna just, as I mentioned before, be super confident way up at the net, but you never get there because you can't handle a low volley. When you get a low volley, singles, doubles, it doesn't matter. It's vital that you hit the ball back low. So you wanna match the angle of your racket to perpendicular, perpendicular of the, ball, the path of the ball. So the ball's coming in at a certain angle, you want your racket to be perpendicular to that angle so that the ball goes back nice and low. You don't want your racket wide open and then you pop the ball up. So that player, and I'm gonna show you the point again, he hit a very low ball over the net. That gave him the chance to then come forward. You don't want to stay where you were when you hit your first volley. You want to serve, let's go over this again, it's so simple, you wanna serve, you're gonna go one, two, three, split step. And then that return often comes very fast to you and it's low, so it's a half volley, it's a low volley. You want to keep that ball back low. Now in that video, and you'll see it here represented, both players were back. Most likely this net player was just dominating off of poaches and being super aggressive, which pushed this team back and this, this player back. If your opponents don't play both back and this player is up, it's really important that when you get a low volley, that first volley in doubles, that you hit it back cross court to the baseliner. Because oftentimes when the ball is low at your feet, this player moves forward and they attack you. And if you pop it up to them, boom, it'll go down the middle, it'll get slammed at this person, it'll get slammed at you. So it's really important when you're playing doubles and you're serving volleying and you get a low ball, that you hit it back cross court, that you hit the ball cross court, and that gives you the opportunity to come forward in the court. All right, let's watch this point again. I want you to look at the one, two, three split step as we, do, as we did before. But then I want you to notice the ball comes low to the server, but he hits it back cross court low again, and that makes sure that he doesn't get his team in trouble. Isn't it cool to see that 
what these players are doing isn't random, that you can actually say they're doing something on purpose to increase the likelihood that they win the point. So the server comes in, one, two, three, split step, so he can change direction if needed. The ball comes low to his feet, which is a great return by, by the player, the returning server, it was awesome. It's exactly what he should be doing. But the server hit this beautiful low volley again, and here's the key. You then need to move forward. As long as you're hitting it to the baseliner, you're gonna have plenty of time. Move forward. This situation, both up, is really the best way to play doubles. Yes, can you lose points this way? Of course. It's, you, people say, yeah, but what if there's a lob? Sure, I understand. You're going to lose points. You can't win a match and, and lose zero points. The goal is you only lose 45% of the points. If you win 55% of the points, you're gonna win that match 6-2, 6-3. You're gonna dominate the match, yet you're losing 45% of the points. What I've noticed when, when players come up and they lose the point, they go, see, that's why I don't like going to the net. I've never had someone stay behind the baseline, lose the point, and then go, see, that's why I hate staying back. They always argue to move back. They never argue why they should be moving forward. But I digress. They move, he moved forward and now he played both up. This player, by the way, hits kind of a, a short little ball over here. He goes and gets it. The ball then pops up and then he slams it away. I want you to watch the point again. I want you to look for the serve one, two, three split step. I want you to look for this player slightly behind the service line, getting a low volley. He, he lowers down, he bends his knees, he gets way down to, as Vic Braden called, smell your volley. He got down to smell the volley. You gotta get down to that ball. He hits it back cross court. He then plays both up and then two shots later, he's slamming the ball away. Watch the point, look for what we've talked about and it's, it'll be cool, I think, to see everything in succession that we've covered. So if you're looking for advantage in your next match, it doesn't matter if it's singles or doubles, it's the same idea. You're gonna serve, go one, two, three, split step, depending on how fast your serve is, how fast you run, how far back your opponent is standing, you'll most likely be in no man's land when you are split stepping, and even with your first volley, especially if it's low and fast to your feet. Practice hitting a good volley. If it's in doubles, hit it back cross court by your way into the net. If you start serving and volleying, and you start dominating the net, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.